with technology making leaps and bounds every day, sometimes becomes hard to figure out what's best for you. That's where we come in. Jano takes a look at the pros and cons of the laptop, tablet, and Ultrabook. It can be tricky living in a technological age. So many confusing messages, so many choices. And if you're not a multi-device kind of person, then what's the right one for you? A laptop, a tablet, or an Ultrabook? Before the release of Windows 8, choosing a tablet was easy. You either got an iPad or an Android operated device like a Samsung Galaxy Note. But now there are so many to choose from that it's easy to get buyer's anxiety about what's the right choice to make for you. Apple's hold on the tablet space was strengthened with the release of the new iPad or the iPad 3. This is in part due to its incredible retina display that boasts a 2048 by 1536 resolution supported by the A5X processor's quad-core graphics. The new iPad is slightly thicker and a little bit heavier than its predecessor, but it has come down a bit in price. The only frustrating thing about the new iPad is the upcoming imminent release of the next generation iPad. The HP tablet brings the best to the new OS, an excellent build quality, bright, sharp and responsive 11.6 inch touchscreen and very fluid and rapid performance thanks to an Intel CoverTrail processor makes this tablet a serious alternative to the tablets running Android or iOS. To top it all off, this baby comes with one of the best mini keyboards we've ever used. Apart, it's fantastic, but together it's got an extended battery life and it's an absolute pleasure to work with. The deciding factor between these tablets really boils down to personal choice. The one notebook that set the world alight recently was the 15-inch MacBook Pro with Retina display. It is the display feature that is truly a sight to behold, thanks to its screen resolution of a superb 2880 by 1880. The MacBook Pro is a slimmer, leaner, meaner machine and is available with a quad-core Intel i7 processor, a GeForce GT 650M graphics card and up to a 16 gigabyte memory. It also comes with an astonishing price tag of 30,000 Rand. For a serious alternative, you could consider the Samsung Series 9 Ultra Portable Notebook, clocking in at around half the price of an Apple MacBook Pro. With a weight of only 1.59 kgs, it's one of the lightest in its class and has achieved this without sacrificing any of its power since it comes equipped with the latest Intel Core i processors. One of the key features of this machine is the excellent anti-reflective HD LED super bright display. Now this machine also comes in a 15 inch version which is quite rare for the small form factor but that makes watching movies and doing Excel as much fun as each other. So the deciding factor between these laptops, this one comes in at 16,000 Rand, is price. Now somewhere between laptops and tablets is what we call an Ultrabook. Now where would an Ultrabook fit in with your life? Well, that just depends. If you're a serious fan of portability, then a lightweight Ultrabook is just the machine for you. Recently we showcased the Acer Aspire S7. Now this machine is right there at the top of the range and comes in at a price tag of about 25,000 Rand. However, if you're looking for something that costs around 10 to 12,000 Rand, then the HP Envy Ultrabook might just be the machine you're looking for. This device is entirely business orientated, which is HP's area of focus. And although it's not the lightest, it weighs about 1.5 kgs, it does have an eight and a half hour battery life, meaning that you can leave your power brick at home and still get a full day's work out of it. It has an Intel Core i5 processor which clocks in at 1.7 GHz, 4 gigs of memory and an SSD hard drive. An excellent keyboard and a great glare reflecting matte finish display means that you can get your work done no matter where you are. So the key deciding factor as to what's the right machine for you is really what you want to do with it. If it's going to be for business use, get something that's going to help you be more productive. If you're looking for style and swagger, then go for a product that's more design centric, but expect to pay a premium. Ultimately, the thing to really look at is the specs, because it doesn't matter how beautiful the machine is, if it's slow, in my opinion, it's rubbish. I hope that helps.